firecrackers, it's Naomi, and welcome to the firecracker department. Our guest today, oh boy, I'm excited because I sat down with my buddy, Jess Salguero. She's just the best. And I've seen her a bunch of times, and then I got to work with her, and we got to hang out, and that was a treat. And then this conversation was fantastic too, because we got to spend some like good, like one-on-one -on -one time together. Now you'll know Jess from everything right now. She's in so many things. She's just like hitting her stride. She was on Orphan Black, uh, The Strain. You've seen her as the mean nanny in Working Moms. She's on The Boys on Amazon. She's on Letter Kenny, and she's on the most recent season of The Expanse. So seriously, this woman is everywhere, and she is just knocking it out of the park. And you can see Jess and myself in the new film, Canadian Strain, which was supposed to be released the 20th, but since the theatrical releases have been delayed due to the old COVID-19, they are fast moving artists. They pivoted and it is now available today on iTunes in Canada. Thank you for moving so fast. Uh, she plays this really cool, complicated weed dealer that goes out of business after Canada legalizes pot. And I play, um, I, 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 I'll I, just say I play Snoop Dogg's number one fan. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, Naomi, classic sneakers. Of course, we all know she's Snoop Dogg's number one fan. Either which way, Snoop Dogg fans, not Snoop Dogg fans. It's a really fun film, and uh, you should go see it. Make sure you follow the film at Canadian Strain to stay in the loop. As you know, Firecracker Department is still in business, and we are still here for you bringing you together, supporting you as artists, as people, whatever you need, we are here for you. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay in the loop about all our virtual events, including a movie club. Yeah, wouldn't you like a movie club where we watch a movie and then we chat about it? We're gonna do it. We are gonna start this week with the Breaker Uproars. <laughs> you say that 10 times fast. That's on Netflix. Stay tuned for more information on how to be part of that conversation. We are also planning open mics, a firecracker cabaret online. That sounds fun to me. I'd like to go. Oh, I will because I'm going to host it. Uh, we're also going to do a virtual version of our script department. And this is going to be fun because I think we're going to start to include some international scripts because why not? We're going virtual. Let's reach out to the folks in Berlin, England, Malaysia, Mexico, wherever you firecrackers are listening. Submit your scripts now. Firecracker script department at gmail.com. Bring them on. And as always, we got you. We are gonna continue our support and our community in the Facebook members group, so stay with us. Stay connected, don't get isolated, don't get down. We got you, okay? We got your back and I know you got ours. Just stay positive, firecrackers. We're gonna get through this together. Jess is one of those people, I, I feel like she's such a, a proactive, artist like she's not only working on things that are coming her way in, in TV and film but she's also working on her own stuff uh, she's got a website bitches be witches she also is gonna be in that show coming up called tiny pretty things um, and a new Netflix series called Jupiter's legacy she just doesn't sleep a lot that's what I'm imagining I had so much fun I'm so glad she made time for me she was in Los Angeles and had to cut her trip short because she had to get back to shoot something and I was like oh we gotta find an hour and we did it and um, I adore I adore this woman I just pounded my chest that's how much I adore her I lean beyond it she's just a real just a true true person and I'm really excited to share this conversation I had with her with you so let's do it the one and only just some you you've been here for like a week yeah. <laughs> and then you thought you'd be here for like a month and a half and yeah then, I, li uh, I literally uh, yeah, is I've been here for like eight days. Yeah, <laughs> how do you do? How do you deal with stuff like that? Like cha drastic change? Because I feel like in our careers, you have to be constantly like rejigging your schedule. Mm -hmm. And I'm not always great with change. Mm -hmm. Are you? I feel like I've gotten more used to it. Yeah. But man, the, I go through phases. Sometimes it's it's not easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's really like I I just want some sort of semblance of security or like normalness or routine yeah there's times I really crave that really crave yeah. it and so if things change I try to find a way to have yeah. some sort of kind of routine yeah where do you get that from um because I'm totally oh the God, same I'm way like, when I'm like <laughs> all right I've got my routine I wake up in the morning I do my yeah, meditation yeah, 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 yeah. I maybe get some yoga in. this is great and then 
something will change and everything will go to pot. Yeah. So where do you find... Oh my gosh. Uh, I guess... I actually really try to have alone time. Yeah? Are you a loner? Are you like... Not... Feels like you've got like a pretty I, I tight it, circle of friends. Yeah, that's true. I feel kind of a balance. It's funny, yesterday I was supposed to go to like this uh, housewarming party and I was like <laughs> in the car with my friend going and I was like, can you just drop me off at Lassen's and You're just going to buy some groceries oh. and go home? <laughs> And she's like, I totally get yeah. it. I was like, I just, especially when you're here, when I just got here. So it's like seeing a bunch of people, right? So yeah. it's just, I got social, social doubt. Yeah. Know? I get like that too. I find mm-hmm. myself like craving people and mm-hmm. then like hitting a wall where I'm like, I just need to like eat crap dinner out of a pan yeah. and just like really <laughs> lay low. And just like it with like your pants unzipped yeah and like watch some sort of embarrassing television show yeah 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 uh yeah do you have a partner are you involved with anything uh yeah <laughs> yeah in that world okay so in the uh yeah world but like i also think like when when matt goes away the things that i like uh-huh. check into is exactly that like i order chinese food oh man. i put my track pants on not that i can't do those things with him he'd be like this right. is a good night yeah yeah but yeah. also it just makes you feel like i don't know back to I, I, I'm so glad to hear that because there's moments when I'm like, am I the only person that's like a slob like this? No. Okay, good. I know people, <laughs> I know people that like come home and put their pajamas on even if it's at two o'clock in the afternoon oh. just to be comfortable, oh. which I get. I totally Bless. get that. Bless. I love that. Um, are you, uh, do you find yourself adjusting like, cause you're, it feels, this is what it feels like with your career. It feels like you were like humming along, like mm-hmm. booked a little thing here, booked a little thing and then it suddenly exploded. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's so interesting that that's Don't you think that's interesting? I that's the, I know. And so, but no, do you feel like there's a tipping point for you recently? Uh, huh. Maybe you just like keep your head down and you're just been working so much. Maybe. It feels like it's been really steady to me mm-hmm. in that, you know, okay, you get your first like guest star, then you get a two episode recurring, then you get like a six episode recurring, and then... Like, and then you get a bunch of those. With mm-hmm. me, it was just like a bunch of those. And then last year, I was like, I've never been a series regular. I really want to get a series regular. And finally got one. And so it's Which just one been... Which was that? Uh, um, it's called Tiny Pretty Things. Yeah, right. Netflix show. With, um, with Michael McLennan. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Who I, I adore. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's felt really steady. You know what? You know what felt like people's concept changed was when I was a tiff rising star oh that's and then people were like oh like congratulations and i'm like on oh, what and, and, and you're like, like rising star yeah. like, <laughs> well the rising star absolutely but mm. i just felt like people all of a sudden were like oh wow like you have a career and i was like i felt like i had a career for two years it's mm-hmm. just been like low-key mm-hmm. um do you feel like your roles tipped like into uh, I want to say like purposeful, but in the realm of like something you can dig your teeth in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's so interesting you say that and like the reaction in my body. <laughs> I want things that I can sink my teeth into. And that's, I had a meeting a few weeks ago at the beginning of pilot season with, with a casting director here and they were like, oh, and she's looking at me being like, I know you can play so and so's girlfriend on this pilot, and I was just like, I don't want to play so and so's girlfriend right. on this pilot. I want to be so and so. Yeah, you can play my boyfriend. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that that was just a realization for me because I left that meeting being like, wait, I didn't even say what I wanted. Like, what do I want? And it made me really. I really reflected on that for the few weeks before I came back here Mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I I don't want to be like an accessory to another character Mm -hmm. which I think you know naturally as you play smaller roles that is what you are you're like kind of helping the lead the leads are more the pivotal piece Mm -hmm. in the in the show but um, yeah I just I love having like 
an arc and momentum and yeah. like actually a character to to grow and build with and yeah so that's starting to happen now which is like so nice yeah yeah it feels like you I mean that could be because of your your training like your Randolph school training of like knowing that you want that kind of thing as opposed to I'll just take whatever comes my way mm -hmm. like do you remember that time where you're oh, like yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not I mean, gonna just, I'm gonna be more purposeful again sometimes I feel like I'm still my agents are like my Canadian agent is amazing and he's always like you know you don't have to say yes to everything I actually default to saying yes to a lot of things. Yeah. But why? Okay, why? Why do we do that? Oh, there's, I feel like, there's tons of stuff. Scarcity mm -hmm. mindset, because I was, you know, hustling actor for 10 years before I ever got, like, a TV spot. Mm -hmm. And the the fear that it's all going to go away. Mm -hmm. or and, and, like, the, and this is the shit that I'm trying to check in with a lot is this whole idea like well you're at a certain spot right now like right. make sure like this is where you have to be really strategic and really which can absolutely be true but it's putting so much weird pressure on yeah. me where i'm going like oh is that the right one is this the coolest one is this the da -da -da, the hottest one and i'm like i don't know i gotta put all that out of my mind and just like go with my gut go with my intuition on these yeah. things because i so much noise yeah. telling you what to is do. Is that from like managers and agents and press and? Uh, yeah, I think it's everything. So how do you um, shut that stuff out? Like, how do you get true to your own journey? Hmm. Uh, I'm asking a lot for of a journey. friend. <laughs> <laughs> right. I saw hard. the artist's way here. I'm doing the artist's way right now. Yeah, with that's our awesome. group, the fire yeah. department, and it's really I've never done it before. Oh, have you? I, I, yeah, I have. The whole I gotta thing? get back to it. No, not the whole thing. It's. I mean, this is um, what I love about this is mostly that just we, morning pages. That's all right. Yeah. Though. I mean, we're doing it as a group, so there's a level of like accountability and support that I really mm -hmm. like. Um, but this kind of thing actually helps with uh, becoming more clear about what I want and. Because I feel like you're an artist as well. Like I think that yeah. there are some people that are in the business for the business, and maybe for, you know, the oh, I'm know. making the, the I... <laughs> camera side of like like some people are into that, and I'm I don't have any judgment about that. But I think I, I can see for you that you have um, a, a different kind of hunger. Mm, thank you. What do you think? I actually really uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I I feel that way. And so how do you put all that noise aside? Luckily, a lot of my closest friends around me are not actors. No, not in the industry at all. Not at all. Yeah. Wh wh who are they? <laughs> <laughs> like, my best friend uh, who I live with, who's been, you know, my best friend since I was a kid, she's a social worker. Um, my other roommate also works in, like, public policy. Oh, wow. And... Um, like I, I have a lot of like teachers and like people around me that I I kind of need that yeah because I feel like oh man our career sometimes it can just like get like so it's a lot it's it becomes this like crazy projection of all of these things like oh I could do this and it's like hold up base level what's going on what actually needs what stories actually need to be told mm -hmm. <laughs> um Okay, what do you mean when when you say that? Like, what what is a story that needs to be told for you? Mm. Something that is radically honest. Mm -hmm. So something that, and I mean, I have done things that are purely for entertainment. I think sure, but I think that's okay too. Yeah, like, I think it's okay too. We can't do constant like I know we have to be easy on ourselves. <laughs> that's like, true. But I think there's sometimes you do something for money because yeah. we need to make a living and then there's sometimes you do it for entertainment which I think has complete value mm -hmm. and then there's the projects that come along and they're like oh no this is for my my craft my yeah. Soul. yeah 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 I guess okay so not just entertainment I'm going to rephrase this things that challenge certain narratives because so much we've seen the same story reproduced over and over and over again mm -hmm. and we're definitely at a time right now where we can disrupt that and it's important to disrupt mm -hmm. that yeah um and so what is so great about <laughs> and also really confronting in a good way living with my best friend who's this phd social worker right. who's right. like deconstructing like systems all the time all of the 
like everything, gender roles, um, pretty much any dynamic and any um, any institution, everything, everything. She's deconstructing everything yeah. all the time. And um, she's the one that sometimes can give me such a real talk and I like really appreciate it. Where she keeps me, she keeps me like somehow like in my body back to basics. Because I just feel like sometimes because we we have this industry that's like so conflated with fame and yeah. public image, all of these things that aren't actually part of our job, but they end up being part of our job. Yeah. <laughs> now, especially. But it's now. not about the art. That sounds so pretentious. It's not yeah. about the art. I'm just holding my <laughs> But like, we started because of that, right? We started yeah. in our grubby track pants, reading script, dissecting it, and. And then at some point there's a turn Mm -hmm. and it becomes, what's the coolest project? Yeah. And how, like, how do you navigate? Like, I feel like, because, you know, the projects that you've had on your plate in the last even year with the boys and things Mm -hmm. like that, like, as you said, you're just taking things as they come. And I get that. But how do you, how do you keep true to yourself along Mm -hmm. the way? Well, honestly... It's funny because I feel like I'm on a journey right now coming back to myself. I feel like I was ignoring myself for a while. What did that look like? Well, it felt like just being busy and wanting, and then having my basic needs met. So being like, I don't have to worry about that stuff. I don't have to worry about thinking super deeply right now or um, challenging myself. I, I, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. And then... I've got food, shelter, and clothing. Yeah, We're exactly. Good. What am I complaining <laughs> exactly. about? Oh, my soul isn't being fed? So be it. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's like a certain level of comfort. I reached a certain level of yeah. comfort in my life, and then I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, I'm fine. So actually, I feel like I'm coming full circle again, being like, okay, no, 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 no. Um, let's actually... Like, even just stuff with, like, my own spiritual practices and actually feed, doing things that are of service again to my community. What does that look like for you? Mm. What kind of stuff do you do in that realm? Well, I mean, I used to... I mean, I I mean, I mean, still do. I have a website called Bitches Be Witches mm-hmm. where felt like what we were trying to do is create like a hub um, so pe- we would release a theme and people would contribute articles or musings, poetry... And it was just a space where people could be honest. People could read things that resonated with them that maybe wasn't wasn't something that had been um, that people aren't usually comfortable sharing, uh-huh. especially in public. Um, just creating like healthier reference points for yeah. women too, because uh, I felt that definitely. In my early and mid twenties, I was like, I don't, I don't know who to look to right now because all the models for me are men, right? In terms of people that march to the beat of their own drum, or that you admired, or there were yeah. places of like power. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was like, I know they're out there. It's just we're not featuring them. Who who do you look to? I mean, I actually look to a lot of women in my community now. Um, people like you oh fantastic so no pressure um no but it's true i remember like a couple years ago yeah yeah. 50 bucks over to you um but about like a couple years ago i was like oh i really i need a mentor Mm. Mm -hmm. and i'm not even like i'm mentoring other people but i still need mentorship Mm -hmm. like don't we don't you think we always will like and i might get i might get mentorship from like you know like somebody much younger than me which i think is also that's really cool too yeah, because I'm inspired by people's like drive and work ethics and passion and mm-hmm. who do you get? To... It's funny actually, Kelly McCormick, who I have been spending lots of time with since I've been here, and also she's a dear friend of mine. But I get a lot of inspiration and energy from her. She's a dynamo. She she's is. like one of those people that just like pew 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 pew. Oh yeah, try to catch one of those sparks. As oh she goes yeah, by. totally. And maybe because we're close friends, like, she's really honest with me about, like, her journey, too. It's not just all, like, yeah, I did this, I made it happen. And, like, da-da-da. It's, like, you know, there's obviously all the things that we all feel. It's superhuman, like, doubts and whatever. And 
Yeah, because social media kind of F's us up, right? That it oh, all yeah. looks like everybody's got it together. Oh, yeah. I feel like there should be like an anti Facebook or an anti Instagram like that's probably... like darkness and like totally. here's me crying about this thing or. Oh, totally. Well, I think that it's, that's the problem with, again, disrupting the narrative. Like, that's the problem with the stories that are, are told about success, which is like they started from nothing and now he's Jeff Bezos or whatever. Right. And so you're like, but wait, what about all that stuff in between? Yeah. Where they failed a million times. A million times. And just did it one more time. And yeah, so they said, you know, the TED Talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember who said this, but they said the TED Talk should be called like a group of failures. Because whoever's <laughs> doing a TED Talk probably had to fail oh, yeah. a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We just don't see that. We see the success. Oh, yeah. I remember, uh, do you know who Tim Ferriss is? Oh, yeah. He runs a podcast. Yeah, he's great. Um, one question he always asks his guests is like, what's your favorite failure? That's and a I great just question. I love that. Oh, what do you think of when for that? Oh, I'm just stealing his question. Oh, man. What's my favorite failure? That's really tricky. Um, I, that's hard because I don't consider them failures. I know that mean that's the word failure. I don't really. It's like regret. I don't think because if I had regrets, I would, I would uh, not have, be the person I am now. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what comes to mind for you. Uh in a weird way I mean I guess this is a failure sort of I totally went through a pretty brutal eating disorder when I was like in my mid 20s and I think my my plan was that like oh I'm gonna look like the way I'm supposed to look and then I'll start booking TV da 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 the way that you know society has pressured women to look whatever I was like, I'll fit, I'll fit everything inside the box. It'll be perfect. I'll get all the jobs, nothing. Right. Like crickets. Wasn't booking at all, and I was like so unhealthy. I like wasn't getting my period. It was like oh it my was gosh, bad. It was I was so unhealthy. And all my friends were like, are you good? And and as part of he- healing myself, um, because really, actually, what struck me as oh shit this is actually a problem now was me not getting my period for two years and I have a sister who's a doula like (laughs) amazing mama earth woman and she's like okay like this is like your your body's talking to you talking to you yeah something's not right and I was like well fuck it you know I'm gonna can I swear yeah like I'm gonna I'm I'm so I mean, this career is messing me up. I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to like go back to school. And she was like, maybe you just need to write about what's going on in you. And she huh. was like, join my... She had like a writing circle that Skyped every morning at like 7 a.m. together. Wow. And so I started doing that and I did it for like a year. And what just kept coming up is I was realizing that I was taking up less space. I kept... There was like this instinct... Uh, I mean, it's not a real natural instinct, but something that was trained in me to just take up less space in like every way. Yeah. Thinking that's the only way that a woman can have any power is actually to be less of herself. Right. So that manifested in every way. My body, but also just like energetic, um, definitely uh, spiritually. And so I started trying to find ways that I could take up more space in order to heal myself. Right. Because I knew I had to do it in the right way. I couldn't just like, oh, fine, I'll just, you know. Eat more. Drink milkshakes all day long and like, then I'll be healthy. I knew I would spiral into a crazy thing if I started doing that. You're lucky that it didn't just like tilt the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I was like, okay, I have to like do this healthy and healthfully. Healthfully? Yeah. Um, (laughs) For sure. Um, And so it was definitely a, a a thing where I had to look at all parts of my life it was like a holistic healing where did you get that from it had a lot to do with my sister yeah, honestly because she like were you brought up in that kind of environment no but I was <laughs> sort of raised by her in many ways like we grew up in a super like traditionally catholic strict house okay. of immigrant parents where there's absolutely gender roles 
um, imposed on you. And somehow my sister, who's 10 years older than me, was able to kind of resist that Hmm. in this really amazing way. I don't know how she did it, but she definitely had a massive impact on me. Mm -hmm. She, She kind of raised me in a way. And so it was... Yeah, she was just like... She just asks the right questions. Mm-hmm. She's like, why do you think you need to be this way? Mm-hmm. Why do you need to da-da-da? And she's like, what do you want to see different in your industry? And I'm like, I want, I want to mm. see all bodies. I want to see like actual, yeah. real people. Mm-hmm. Real women. And um, Great question. Yeah. And then I was just like, yeah. She's like, you know, classic Gandhi would be the change you want to see in the sure. world. Yeah. Like. Why do you expect Gandhi. other classic Gandhi? <laughs> yeah, right. Nancy I think there's a Sunny. t-shirt for sure. <laughs> yeah. Classic Gandhi. Um, and so, yeah. But I mean, just she real. knew you well enough to, to know that that would work for you too, right? Mm-hmm. You never know what the key is going to be for it's somebody. true. But she knew that you wanted to make an impact in your industry. Totally. And, um, yeah, so it was a slow process, kind of. I don't know if slow. It was the right amount of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that kind of feels like my favorite failure because I had this like plan. Right. Like, and I was like, <laughs> it's just check, it, check. There were so many things like at that point in my life, I was like, had gone through this breakup and I was dating this like kind of famous punk rocker. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to show them. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to be like this hot actress. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> none of it worked. Um, Do you remember turning a point and being like, uh, when you felt comfortable in your skin again? Oh. Do you remember the moment that you're like, oh no, I'm back. I'm back to mm. Ooh, what an excellent question. I want to pin that down to a moment. Well, there's uh, for me, like there's certain parts where I feel most myself and mm-hmm. whether it's like I've gone through something and then I'm on the other side and I'm like oh I'm back mm. and whether I don't know stuff. yeah there's like yeah. moments I can think of when I've been traveling and I've oh, faced like yeah. real challenges oh yeah like nightmare challenges that I'm like okay I got through that I'm gonna be okay oh yeah I just hitchhiked across France mm. and I didn't get raped and murdered so I'm gonna be okay you know totally do you remember a, a turning point yeah. for you? Oh my gosh, it's so interesting. Um, okay, so I went to Portugal for like two weeks. Um, and I was like going to Fadu. Fadu is a kind of music from Portugal that I sing and I love it. It's very like melancholic and haunting and dark. And it's like done in these like little taverns like with women usually women singing all in black with like flamenco guitar yeah. and it's like candlelit it's like this really yeah. sacred thing in to... a cave like to- totally yeah, candlelight I oh love yeah that. yeah very like sacred to Lisboetas, which are like people from Lisbon and um anyway I just spent like two weeks like around this and having this like amazing time there and I remember I was at the airport and I was feeling good like I was eating whatever I wanted I was eating like mm-hmm. stuff I wasn't touching the year before mm-hmm. like give me all the pastries mm-hmm. all the pastel de no like everything yeah um and I was like I remember being like slightly worried like oh no like does this mean that whatever classic like fucking bullshit talk oh my god am I gonna get fat now blah 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 blah, blah. Yeah. bullshit but I was I remember I was at the airport I had a stopover in JFK and I was like trying to continue my writing. So Bitches Be Witches was originally kind of like a book I was writing about this yeah. process. Great. And I had my laptop out and I, I just went, no, I'm a sham. Like I can't keep writing this. I haven't even got my period back. Like, right. like I'm not. And I closed my laptop. I went to the bathroom. Oh, I said, I'm only going to start writing this once I get my period back. I literally went to the bathroom that moment and I got my period and I started crying yeah. in the stall. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. have I never had a clearer sign in my life um, that I should keep doing this? Yeah. Um, but that was definitely, I feel like that was a really important moment for me to be like, okay, 
like I'm connected to my body again like something yeah. something got yeah something that had been I don't know I don't want to say I broken know, I but disrupted like dislodged. yeah dislodged yeah. Was, was back together and um yeah that was that was a big one but yeah every time I travel that's a it's a big one especially when I travel mostly when I travel by myself because mm-hmm. then I'm like mm-hmm. checked as to like how to handle the things that normally like you do if you're in a partnership and uh-huh. like he's gonna take care of holding sure. the passports yeah, and he's yeah, yeah. gonna take care of this aspect but <laughs> oh yeah suddenly you find yourself especially when I was like in my 20s I was like really a world traveler I loved oh, it oh cool yeah so then now as you're like you're kicking along with your career you're just taking like I, I this have this image of you of like just like playing tennis and like things are just coming your way and you're like yeah I'll take that yeah bam bam and then like oh God, I love that do you have like a vision do you have like a vision of your future of like mm. the things you don't do want mm. because I think when you say like you don't want to seem ungrateful and not take jobs as they come your way but at the same time you have to honor that person oh, that sure. started Bitches Be Witches oh for sure and that journey so how do you balance for sure. that I'm really coming kind of to that intersect right now um to those crossroads I should say and honestly it's like I'm constantly having to check in with myself why I do this mm. job mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually always say that to young actors too when we talk about the industry I'm like you're gonna have to constantly be like renegotiating this with yourself mm-hmm. because as soon as you start to like lose the plot <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or like lose track of why you're doing this and once it starts to become about fame I'm just gonna say you might be entering dangerous territory right. mentally um how am I navigating it honestly I have really good I have really good reps that yeah I told my agent I'm like literally this is like last week I was like you know me you know I say yes to almost everything so don't send me stuff mm-hmm. if you think it's if you really think it's not good for me he's like you got it yeah. <laughs> I was like don't send it to me but what do a vision that I have for my career it's so it's so funny because uh, I've always had problems answering these questions because it's more of a feeling it challenges it though right? it does like we don't as you said like you have to stop every once in a while and go why am I doing this mm-hmm. because it's really easy to jump on a train and just start doing the things that come your way yes 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 yeah. but to ask yourself why you're doing it I think is really provocative absolutely yeah and I think that I'm really guided by a feeling like I'm I'm really guided by do I have is this project gonna allow me to be as revealed as I want to be and uh, if the answer is sort of like hmm I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna take those risks or I don't know Mm. if they want that much honesty then I'm sort of then I'm now I'm starting to be like okay Mm-hmm. That's not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I do want to be. You used such a good word, provocative. Um, because I, I don't know. It's I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's for me. It's just like, oh, it's like why I'm alive. It's like I just want to. I, I'm okay being, um, an example. Do you know what I mean? Not really. Tell me okay. more. <laughs> I, feel, I, do, I but... feel like I'm okay. Like, it, I want to be honest so other people can be honest. You know? Right. Yes. I don't... It's so interesting. Someone someone told me the other day, this a really rad chick from England who's an actor here. She was like, you know, sometimes you can like sit with someone and you just know they're a good actor. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And... And we were talking about what that is, what that, what that quality is. And I was like, I think it's like gravitas. It's something about like they know they have pain. They know there's pain. Yeah. And they're okay with it. Right. And they're not constantly trying to be like, I'm okay. And outsmart themselves, outsmart their emotions. But they can just, it just lives there. Mm-hmm. It's not about wallowing in it, but it's just like, they can hold space for that. Mm-hmm. And if you can hold space for your pain, I feel like other people can also see that it's okay. Mm. And you can hold space for other people's pain too. That's yeah. the other thing. Is like, 
anyway. No, I like I like mm-hmm. that. I, it feels like you you have this wisdom. I mean, right? You've got like an old soul. You've been told that before. Yeah. Right. Like, have you yeah. been in this sort of yeah, realm yeah, yeah. for like your entire life of like? I've always been a. I'm a Scorpio. I'm like. I feel like I've always been like a okay in the darkness. Right. 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 Like. <laughs> Although, apparently, according to my Enneagram, I'm an enthusiast, which doesn't like being sad, but um, anyway. Well, I mean, you can be <laughs> live in the darkness, but not want to stay there. Yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. It's just yeah. visiting. You're just passing You're just through. visiting. Just... I, I do like getting to the root yeah. of, of what it is, like what, you know, sometimes some people can be like, oh, I'm just like in an off mood today. Mm-hmm. And like, they're okay, like admitting that, which is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, that's just where I'm at. I'm more like, I have to figure out what that is. Right. I'm getting to it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to journal until my wrist hurts. Yeah. Like, figure this out. Um, yeah. I Yeah, I really appreciate that. But it's, uh, now, do you find that, because I love, like, I mean, that's why we are actors, right? Like, what you're mm-hmm. talking about is this beauty craft that we get to do. Mm-hmm. But we don't always get to do it. It's true. So that when you go to do, like, a day, a guest star on that thing... How do you find that depth then? Oh man, it's hard. Right, it's, but we, that's our job, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't know if I have the answer. I think it's sometimes I get to set and I'm like, oh, this is not going to be one of those days. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna just do my job, and but other times you you can look at your scene partner and go, yeah. oh, we're gonna we're gonna do something today. Yeah. So how do you find it? Oh my God, Key. This is gonna be like kind of like whoa, well. Depending how conservative some of these listeners are. Okay, I read this book called Pussy. Okay. <laughs> so far, so good. You're not scaring anybody. I go. Th- I highly go recommend deep. it. It's amazing. But uh, what she talks about a lot is like breathing into, breathing in your pussy, but breathing into like your, your base, yeah. your basin. And sometimes when I, I feel like when I actually connect to that part of my body and like that root, there's. It's like a never-ending stream of, of stuff. Mm. If I really just let it, if I try to like remove the blocks that are always like, <laughs> and I just breathe, and I, tr- you know what it is? It's trusting. Mm. It's just like a deep trusting yourself, um, is what it feels like in yeah. me. Being like, it's there, and like if it's not there on that tape, whatever. Forget these people. It'll. It's there though. Right. You know. And the most I can do the. The only thing I can really control is just like trying to let it come up, let it be calm, let it, let myself be calm, mm-hmm. make space for it. Marlon Brando said something. Someone was like, "Why are you such a good actor?" He's like, "I breathe out of my asshole." <laughs> I was like, "That's so." I funny. mean, I get it. There's a level of connection to our yeah. lower regions that we need to do. Yeah, but I think it becomes. It's the balance that I sometimes struggle because there's so much cerebral. Sure. And as like a writer, producer, like creator mm-hmm. that you are, it's sometimes detached, right? Sure. Um, so I, I don't I don't know how to find like what's your practice that you do to keep connected to that? I mean, as an actor, like I do a lot of Meisner. Yeah. Um, just because it keeps me out of my head. And also I become a good lie detector for myself uh-huh. and I know when it feels honest and I feel like that's really I feel like that's really important like mm-hmm. in knowing your instrument mm-hmm. knowing when it feels honest instead of trying to like be like okay what do they want what does what does this scene need or da 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 it's like okay no like if I'm connected to my body I'm gonna know when it feels right mm-hmm. and when it feels off and yo, sometimes it's been off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> are you able to go, oh, well, uh, I get so disappointed. Yeah. Uh, and like watching yourself, I can watch myself going, oh, sneakers. I, I honestly I mean, don't watch myself I, very I often I don't at all. anymore because there's times that it just like, I can see, like I can see oh, yeah. the light turn oh, off. Yeah. Or... yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Um, I'm getting better at just sort of being like, you did your best. Yeah. And if I didn't do my best, trying to be honest with myself about that too, being like, mm, I could have been more prepared. Mm-hmm. And, and, but not spiraling into, oh my God, I'm a failure. I'm going to, I'm never going to have a career now or, 
I'm I'm being blacklisted. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I did spiral. one bad scene yeah. and everything's over. Um uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be like, look, we're all figuring it out. Like we're all just doing yeah. our best. That's a big difference in the way that I've started to live my life is like Brene Brown says this. I don't know, I forget which book it was, maybe Daring Greatly. Mm-hmm. Um where someone asked her, her therapist said, do you believe people are doing their best? Mm-hmm. And she was like, hell no. Like, <laughs> and then she did this like uh, social experiment where she interviewed, I don't know, a couple hundred people and, we, and asked them, do you believe people are doing their best? And the results were just 50-50. Some people said yes, some people said no. Right. And then she asked her husband and he, he took that question away for a while and came back and was like, I don't know if people are doing their best, but it makes my life better believing that they are. Mm. And that is just like, mm-hmm. it's changed. It's, <laughs> and I'm, I, I don't say it as in like, oh, I'm trying to let myself off the hook by being like, you did your best. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'm like, stop being so critical. You did your best. Mm-hmm. And you would have said that to anyone else. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Yes, I full on agree. It with makes it. my it's life just, better, <laughs> and I do. I think I always say like people are doing their best. It might not be the best for me, mm. and then that kind of lets me have the feelings that I feel. Sure, sure, think, sure. As opposed to discounting them, being like, mm-hmm. "You're doing your best. I shouldn't be upset." Right. But I still don't know how to stop beating myself up about it. Like, mm. have you crossed that bridge? Are you like, const- or is it constantly navigating? No, I'm. I I will say I think I'm better at it. Yeah. It's a muscle. Are you better at it? Um, it depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I am. And then, you know, like life and True. like every day is so different. And so I'll be dealing with something in the morning and then go to set and I'll be like, not where I need to be. But I do think that, I do think that having the muscles of a better practice helps you. So like, it's not mm-hmm. like, like meditation, for instance. I try to meditate as much as I can, but it's not something I'm like, Oh, I gotta quickly meditate. I gotta get coming up. You have to like have those muscles in place. Yeah. So that when you're on set and you're having one of those like, I'm not doing very well right now, you can click into that. Oh yeah. As opposed to like it, cramming for a meditation test. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's so true. It really does start that I mean it's that also that expression, like how you do anything is how you do everything. And it's like if you're trying to find ways to be nicer to yourself in your work you have to find ways to be nicer to yourself in all ways always yeah and the i mean i think the hardest thing about our job actually is dealing with the distractions while you're on all the obstacles Mm. while you're not even while you're on set like leading up and that too all the distractions that you have before you get to practice what your Mm -hmm. craft is what your passion is Mm -hmm. it's a lot Mm -hmm. i often have to be like like when I'm actually on set and man when I was younger so many things like I'm wasting their time Mm. oh like Mm -hmm. I can't do another take because uh, I gotta get it on one take they're they're so stressed I'm just like fuck it take up space like I'm sorry yeah take your stress elsewhere I'm here to just do my best on this scene and like I can't you know what I mean it's like that eating disorder gave you that lesson like super early. Take a space, yeah. Yeah. It's true. Like did you, I mean your sister helped guide you through, was there anything else like anybody that might be struggling with something like that too where mm. they're like, oh I can't, I'm wasting time. Like is there anything that you can give as advice to that? Asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just feel like that's something that, like I don't think we ever... It's so, go on. like oh I was I was gonna say I don't think we ever like done. Do you know what I mean? And I figured Abs- that out. No, no, but no, no. I, I think like right now it seems like you you got a hold of something, and it might like switch next week, next year, next totally. something, and be like, okay, now I got to figure this out. But if the more aware we are of the journey and figuring things out, mm-hmm. I think the better. Oh, for sure. But I interrupted you. What were you gonna say? About? <sighs> There's so many things I want to say. You can say them all. I'm like. You I got mean, time. okay, you got part, but part time. of the, I think part of the antidote, I almost said anecdote, yeah. antidote <laughs> to, to this is remembering 
what makes you special. Like remembering that that you're your your own unique being. And again, when when young actors or anyone talks to me, I'm like, go travel, fall in love get your heart broken, like do all the things. Mm -hmm. Don't play it safe. No. Because nobody's going to learn from safety. No. No. And no one's path is your path. Honestly. It's their path. Yeah. If you follow it, it's not going to work. It's not your path. Like you need to do your own thing. AKA lean into what makes you happy. Lean into uh, what you're interested in. Like there's no time wasted. You know, I think so much in, Mm. in, the West, especially, it's like productivity. It's like, okay, I just graduated from mm-hmm. university. That means that I need to da 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 da. I'm like, great, you just graduated university. Go fuck off to South America for a year. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or listen to your instincts. Or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If your instincts. Because some like, people don't. like, I don't want to do that. I don't know. You're like, no, go. You have to go. Uh, I think travel is super important. Me too. Um, what uh, presence? What gets you? What's that? Makes you present. But yeah. Yeah. I haven't traveled for a long time. I often like tag on travel when I'm working yeah. and that's not always good either. Like it's good mm. to just do purposeful travel where you're like backpack yeah. and, and that's it. That's all yeah. you need. But, um, I was going to ask you what, what drives you now? Like you are getting offered roles, mm-hmm. maybe easier than you used to. Mm-hmm. So what drives you to keep doing to it? Keep going. <sighs> Believe it or not, there's no place that I think people with ambition get to where they're like I'm good yeah right, 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 right. <laughs> and settle I'm good and then Every... it may be like this millisecond and yeah. then the next one will be like oh oh but maybe I, I could have gotten more episodes or maybe I could have gotten a better deal or maybe yeah. maybe I should have been on a different network or maybe did it and all this oh stuff my God. right it's a lifetime oh yeah I talked to even I was going to say talk to Beyonce, but I don't, <laughs> and she's not a friend of mine. But, like, I, I'm sure everybody still struggles with, like, you know, like, how many stories, there should be a great book somewhere about the stories of successful people when they're at their peak of success, yeah. and they're feeling the worst they've ever felt. Totally. Which I, I know happens time and time again. It's the ebbs and flows. So you, do you have, um, like, you, you have a drive, then, to keep creating. Do you have yeah. a drive, like, to do your own thing? Yeah. Well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where does that live? Because I also think that's juggly. Because, right, people are getting you from... Juggly? Juggly, you know. I think you get what I mean. Come on, yeah. Uh, But, like, because people are giving you roles, and you would have to challenge those gifts of roles in order to pursue your own things sometimes. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate that? Oh, man. Well, I haven't quite got there yet. Um, Right now, it's more like I'm creating stuff in my side Mm -hmm. time. Um, like writing books yeah, and like writing. whatnot. Yeah, I'm writing a feature right now too. Um, it's what was it? Sorry, my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard um, that on podcasts before? When tummies rumble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think there's actually a podcast called When Tummies Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Um, <laughs> I should feed you. Is that what Mm-mm. you're saying? No, you're not hungry. No, I'm good. Uh, I got my. It's a licorice tea. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Um, my question was like your balance between creative output and creative input like oh, being part of somebody else's sandbox and make your own yeah it's I, I feel like the kind of train I've been on in the past year has been like okay I'm gonna do a lot I'm gonna do a lot of other people's projects um, in terms of I'm just lending myself as an actor uh, in hopes of being able to afford the time to not Mm -hmm. always do that Mm -hmm. and really be um really either be in creation mode or just like really really choosy over what i'm doing yeah spending my time doing other stuff you've got such amazing um business savvy you think so Uh uh-huh i don't think everybody has this kind of self-awareness or insight (sighs) into your the future of your creative career as you you see you think so yeah that's nice where do you get that from uh probably like my really intense immigrant parents yes <laughs> <laughs> that really are like have a plan oh do it's like it's it's funny it blows my mind the amount of people i know that are like um things like don't file their taxes or whatever yeah. i'm like oh my god oh my god my parents are like <laughs> do 
follow the rules, do the thing, right. be prepared. Like, so no wonder you're like, I'm going to break some rules. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But they've definitely, um, uh, like they've, they've been entrepreneurs and really, you know, classic kind of like started from nothing. So they, they're, they're never, they've, they've taught me to never be entitled to anything. Hmm. And to never expect people to just <laughs> give you any level of success. Yeah. Like, I've always been well aware that whatever I wanted to do, I would be creating. And especially the fact that I'm an artist and, like, no one in my family is an artist. Mm-hmm. They're like, what? They're like, okay, well, then you're working, like, five times harder yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, like, I just... I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I think I was... I think I was always just, like, aware and comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, but then having the structure of, like, keep to the rules, like, your folks yeah. saying, like, keep on track that way. Yeah, like, just... I guess it's just, like, be prepared, be responsible. Yeah. It's really about being responsible, actually. And... um that's funny because all your characters are so like not all of them but very irresponsible oh, totally. like they're like just <laughs> I play disasters a lot of, totally. like, yeah play a lot of like criminals and stuff yeah. too yeah um which i love like i actually love it was funny i was doing kind of like a photo shoot yesterday sort of like a headshot session and the photographer was like so what kind of like roles are you like trying to get now and i was like I'm trying to get now I'm like I don't know I feel like I I feel like I get to play what I want to play mm. and she's like oh cool that's like you're lucky yeah. and I was like yeah I think why I actually have started to see this as such a amazing benefit was I went to musical theater school which oh, you sing too wants to yeah I mean I don't really <laughs> sing musical theater but okay I used to more um they want to fit you in boxes like you're an ingenue or you're a character actor or you're a da 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 and I feel like I somehow was strange enough that they they couldn't mm. really place me mm-hmm. the same way like we you're don't not an do. ingenue but you're not you're a character actor but you're not quite musical theater character actor yeah. um, so we're not sure where what you are kind of and so I kind of got away with not being boxed in yeah as much as I saw a lot of my peers unfortunately get boxed in I bet at the time you were like oh just oh, box me in oh sure at the time I was like I was like there's no rules for me like I don't you know what I mean like yeah. I don't what do I play and I ended up playing a lot of men male roles mm-hmm. like my whole life I've played male roles male roles in plays musicals like everything interesting so, um, yeah, now, again, things are changing, which are awesome. There's more dimensions to uh, a lot of female roles coming out now. But um, So paint, paint me a picture of what your, like, ideal I life is. Yeah. So sweet. I know, he's, he's doing good. He's, he's just so. cleaning. He's just cleaning. Well, like, I think it's, like, his version of biting his nails. Um, yeah, like, pay, pay, I have to, this is also me needing to wrap it up, because I yeah, can yeah, also, like, of course. we always have these episodes, and I'm like, oh my god, I could talk, and they're like an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, I, like, forgot all, we're doing a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, would, I, like, what's your, what's your next passion? Like, you, you've got contracts, you've got things mm-hmm. coming up that are, you don't have to take the lead on them, you're just gonna mm-hmm. do your work, and then mm-hmm. do your job. But is there anything that you're like, I have to do this? I, I know in my gut, I know in my soul, I need to. I definitely need to direct. Yeah? I've directed theater. Oh, yeah? Which I love. Also, I need to go back to theater, too, as an actor. Um, why do you say that? I mean, I get it, but why do you say that? <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. Yeah. It's so satisfying. The, the audience, um, the momentum of the play, because it's not just like cut, 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 and you do it 50 times. And then... If you're lucky, one of the crew members is like, ha, that was good. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> like, my audience is for the boom operator. Exactly. If he's smiling, I'm like, victory! Totally. Yeah. 
and like things are out of sequence so you don't get to feel this like really beautiful journey that you get to feel often in theater because it's ha- yeah. not always but often happening sequentially so is there a play you want to do oh uh, either be in or direct there's this Neil the Butte play called The Mercy Seat. Neil the Butte is nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He has this play called The Mercy Seat. I did like a monologue from that when I was in theater school, and uh, I just I don't I don't think I'm quite old enough yet to play yeah. it. But 100 percent when I'm old enough to play it, I'm like I have to do that yeah. play. It's it's just a two hander and it's so delicious. Yeah. Like it's. Uh, it's like guts um and I want yeah I, I, I really can see myself directing at some point I'm not really in a rush mm-hmm. I'm not like oh my god I need to do mm-hmm. this now. um but yeah I love working with actors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I actually love directing actors and playing with them and, yeah yeah um who in your life is a firecracker I already said my sister. <laughs> is this a rapid fire round? No, yeah, it's rapid as one question. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, my uh, the like three closest women to me, my my sister and my my two closest friends that are oh, they're just brave people. They're just brave. Mm. What do you think? What it makes them brave? <sighs> Like, they're not they're, superheroes. They're, like, are they firefighters? Yeah. But, like, you know, like, because when I think of bravery, I think sure, of, like... Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is brave to you? Oh, that's so, that's so funny that we have... I know, but isn't it true? Like, I, I also, like, if so I dig like, deeper, I'm like, oh, no, bravery is facing... It's just such a masculine thing way to look at it. Like, warrior, oh. like... Oh, I saw it as a woman. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, like, um... That's my own shit. I saw like, it as a woman. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I was, like, a war, like a... Like a Viking, like mm. yeah, bravery. Like Joan of Arc, I yeah. see that as brave. But like, right. what's your version of brave bravery? Again, being honest with yourself. <laughs> I love that it's, a it's question. scary, it's right? right? It's fucking scary being honest with yourself because you like disappointing your own expectations is like the hardest thing ever. Yeah, and you know, and. <sighs> having a dream or a projection of how things are going to go some often like with relationships or it could be anything it could be anything external or whatever and it not going the way mm-hmm. that you intended and being honest about all of the nuances of that also not always just like vilifying the thing or the person that you didn't get and being like it's okay. It's not it's not meant for me sometimes. And sometimes it's just like it's not meant it's it, this isn't supposed to be and yeah. I know I like wished it to be this way but it's not. And yeah. it still hurts. Oh my god, it hurts so much. I guess what I'm saying about like my friends for example that I'm talking about is that they seem to catch it sooner rather than later. Mm. Meaning, they're not gonna let it drag on forever and compromise everything and all their integrity mm-hmm. just to hold on to this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And to be like, okay, actually, I, I, I can't compromise this. I can't compromise my yeah. integrity. When's the last time you compromised your integrity? <laughs> this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm trying to think of like a specific thing. I mean, I, I do it. I do it sometimes when I know I should speak up about something and I don't do it. Mm-hmm. Where I someone's talking feeling. shit in a way that I'm like, oh. and I'll be like, uh, yeah. I bet you're getting better at that though. I am getting better. I at feel that. like this wave, you know, in, in the climate that we're in right now, has taught me to get better with speaking up. Yeah, but it's still like that is a great example of when I'm like, oh, sneak us, speak yeah. up, speak up, yeah, louder, yeah. Oh. Yes, and I, it's better for everyone. Yeah, in the long run. Yeah, even it really the jerk. is. 
Yeah. <laughs> totally. Oh, you're welcome. I've yeah. just taught you a lesson. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice you would give your younger self? I love that question. It's a, a sort of a trick question. I'll let you answer and then I'll tell you why I think it's tricky. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it depends a, what age, but... Well, it's your own choice. Like, okay. your younger self could have been last week if you really want. Not to eat that burrito at 4 o'clock in the morning. My advice to my I know self. it's a tricky question because obviously if you tell them something, then they wouldn't have gone through the journey that got you to be right. who you so, are. Right, so getting that notion, yeah. Putting that Honestly, on it would have been something I said earlier, which is like, no one's path is your path. Like, just, I feel like there are these really poignant times in my life, like 12 and like 20, when I feel like I knew who I was. Mm-hmm. And then I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. And I got inundated with all the noise and all the voices and all the pressures and was like, oh fuck uh, I d- and just felt like those are they kind of feel like lost years to me in a way like I, they almost feel like a gap in my memory a little bit they're not as vivid as the times where I was like oh I know who I am mm-hmm. and who I am is different than anyone else uh, so yeah it's something like that and I, I just got the results back and you're right <laughs> Your answer was correct. I just want to let you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, got I love talking with you. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's such a great chance just to have this time. I know. I'm not even recording this. So <laughs> I just wanted this to hang out This is just the warm you. up. That's right. Imagine. I should push play. Um, yeah. We're in a movie together. I love it. I haven't seen it yet. And the thing is, like, because I'd always like admired you, like, like when I'd see like the work that you were doing, and then. You get this chance, like I don't even think I knew how lucky that time was. Like on oh, set of like hanging out with you, yeah, and stuff. it was just, like such a good time, so fun and playful, and you know, <laughs> I ruined so many takes from laughing. Oh, that's that's my job. There, <laughs> no, seriously, They're really fun. Have you seen it? No, I saw it for the first time in Whistler, and yeah, it's fun. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll see it. Oh yeah, maybe at, I'll see in it in March. March. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Not seeing that. Good luck. I think you're fantastic. Thank you. I do. I Thank think you. you're so great. Thank you for those ideas. I want to do this again. And yeah. Again. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. You know what rhymes with Jess? Yes. So I say yes to Jess. She's fantastic. I'm just so very happy that we made time for each other and sat down and had this chat and uh, yeah, she's just the best. Sometimes it's easy, you know, to say yes to a lot of things. I mean, for me, that's how I say yes to everything all the time. And uh, sometimes it's not the right thing. But I'm always really, really happy when I get to have, you know, one of these deep conversations with a firecracker because I know it's always the right thing. I always know. I've never had one of these discussions and gone, well, that was a waste of time. (laughs) It's always been really, really meaningful. And I'm so grateful that these folks that have been my guests spend time with me. You know, time's time's precious. And uh, yeah, I feel really lucky for that. Don't forget to follow Jess on her social media and let us know while you're over there what your favorite part of this chat was. You can follow us. Instagram and Twitter is at firecrackerdept. I'd love to know what stood out for you and what resonated for you in this conversation. You can see Jess now on Letter Kenny on Crave TV, The Boys and The Expanse on Amazon, Working Moms on Netflix, and CBC Gem. I mean, really, you have so many options. Turn on the TV, switch around to Amazon, Netflix, CBC, and you'll probably find Jess. Hey, put in your books. The upcoming Spark Chat live on Instagram is the first Sunday of every month. It depends what time my guest is available, but uh, it's usually sometime around noon Pacific Standard Time, which means like 3 or 4 Eastern Standard Time, and we usually announce the time beforehand. Uh, We've had great chats. Oh my gosh, Cameron Manheim had so many words of wisdom to offer us last month. Before that was Astrid Van Weer and Cat Barrel. And this month coming out, the one and only Sarah McVie from Working Mums and The Handmaid's Tale will be my guest. So I can't wait to chat with her and catch up with her life and then take questions from you as well. 
So you can find all the details for that on our Instagram page at firecrackerdept. Thank you so much to my big firecracker team. Oh my gosh, I couldn't do any of this without them. Here's the team that are in LA. It's AJ Edmonds, Farah Marani, Emily Churchill, Monique Madrid, Camille Adams, Jordan Giddens, Deanna Moffat. And then in Toronto, there's a whole other chapter. And those are Joanne Boland, Anne Augustuson, Veronica Martin, Sydney Nielsen, Laura Lee Damaccio, Winnie Wong, Naomi Wright, Chelsea McKenzie, and Sarah Bowden. And don't forget about our UK chapter. We've got Vicki Breer over in England, and she is staying up late because of the time zones and helping us build our community, so thank you. And we're just getting started. There are people joining us all the time, and we're lucky and we are better off for it. So thank you so much for all the folks that have reached out and said, hey, I see what you're doing in the firecracker department and I want to help. Thank you. Maybe some of you are thinking, hey, I'd like to get involved. I really would love that. So why don't you go on over to our website, see what we're doing and see what part kind of jazzes you. It could be something in the comedy department, the art department, the script department, the red point department where we celebrate aging in the arts. Uh, just go on over to firecrackerdepartment.com and check us out. And then drop me a line at firecrackerdepartment at gmail.com and let's chat. Go over to Instagram or Twitter at firecrackerdept. And while you're online, because who's kidding who, we're online all the time, why don't you go over and give us a little rating and review? Because it really helps us keep bringing these podcasts to you and keep building our community. It really does. We know that you have two ears and there's a lot of things you could be listening to. So we really appreciate that you're choosing Firecracker Department. And we just got one better because you're here. See you next time on the Firecracker Department, everybody.